Okay, Nelson, alcoholic addict. That is not my real name. That is a pretend name that I came up with to write things on the internet about sobriety on my newsletter, LOL Sober. Uh, we just celebrated Father's Day at my house, and I got to say, I think it might have been my favorite Father's Day that I've ever had. It was, it was great. We did not do anything really mind-blowing, but my kids... They said very personal things to me and gave me very personal gifts, and so did my wife. Uh, and it was just a great feeling. It felt like it felt like the sign of relationships that go much deeper than surface level, real relationships. And I'm proud of that. They know me, and I know them, and I thought it was a beautiful thing. And I spent some time thinking about my first Father's Day back in 2009, uh, my first sober Father's Day, I should say. You know, it was an awesome, refreshing day um, because holidays had been such a disaster for me in the past. I really, I always took the opportunity on a day like Father's Day to com to get completely out of control drunk or high or both <laughs> because I knew I, I probably wasn't going to get yelled at on my birthday or Father's Day. It was my day, guys. So I will projectile vomit wherever I want and however many times I want, Okay. So I remember on Father's Day 2009, um, being sober for the first time, I remember making a lot of phone calls to my sober network, uh, probably five to seven people if I recall. Um, I wanted to just express gratitude to them for helping me get there. And most of them were fathers too. So I want to say father, happy Father's Day to them. And um, I remember, remember one conversation very vividly because I said something along the lines of, you know, oh, it's days like this that make sobriety worth it. This is why I push so hard to stay sober. It's for my wife, for my kids. And I sent some hesitation on the other end of the line. So I, so I, I inquired why. I asked, you know, what's, what, what, hey, you're not saying anything. What, what's going on here? And I remember the guy being very cautious and gentle because uh, he didn't disagree with me. But eventually he said something to me about how once you've been sober for a while, you can't you realize you can't stay sober for something else. You can't stay sober for your wife, your husband, your kids, your job. You can't stay sober because you want to make more money. You can't stay sober because just because you want to get your parole officer off your ass or get promoted at work. Um and his his point was that you, you have to figure out the higher power thing and then use your higher power to stay sober because you want to be sober. And I was confused by that because I I said to him, like, hey, aren't kids, aren't kids a pretty damn good reason to get sober? Isn't being a good husband a good reason to get sober? Like, come on, man. And he said, yes, I don't, I, you know, he said, I, I don't, I'm not, I'm not saying you're wrong, but I, I want, he just wanted to push me to think about what happens if a sober person gets the thing they want. What if they get the house they want, the job, the wife, the parole, the kids, what, what if everything's great? What then? What's the driving force behind your sobriety if you have the thing that was propelling you to get sober and stay sober? And I had to let that seed grow for a while because I didn't completely understand it. But I eventually got it. I eventually understood what he meant. And now I really do. I've seen it in sobriety. You know, when I used to chair meetings in New York City, you know, I'd sit up there in front of the room and I'd, I'd run the meeting and... At the end, I would routinely have people who would come up, they needed you to sign their card after a meeting to indicate that they'd attended. Um, and I, I, I think it was just court mandated, like, hey, you have to go to 50 meetings or whatever, and, and they would have to get it signed. And I remember, I remember getting to know a few of these guys pretty well. You know, they'd come in for a month or two months, and I'd fill out their card after every meeting, and... And then I remember the first time that I filled out the last line for a guy. He had done, you know, his 25 or 30 or 50, whatever it is, 12-step meetings. Um, I never saw him again. He was, I filled out that last line. He showed it to whatever. He went to court, gave it to his lawyer, whatever. He was gone. That was it. And um, that was the one thing keeping him coming to meetings, I guess, you know, and it made me a little sad. But it strengthened my resolve to find a purpose in sobriety other than just getting people off my ass or just getting some external thing. That, that's not enough for me. It might be for other people. It's not for me. And I think I got to a good place 
overall, you know, in the years since. I don't, I don't stay sober these days because anybody else wants me to. I don't, not even my, my sponsor or people that I love in the program. I don't, get, I don't stay sober because of them. I want to be sober because I've seen how much better life is. And that includes joyous days like Father's Day. There's, there's nothing like having a sober Father's Day or Christmas or birthday even. Let me end with some straight talk, though. Like, I think the day after Father's Day might be my least favorite day of the year. <laughs> because as an addict, when you have a day where everybody's nice to you and they give you gifts and they take suggestions from you with no questions asked, they just do it. It feels like more is better. Like maybe every day should be Father's Day. How about that? And um, it's not, okay? It definitely is not. Let me just say the day after Father's Day is no longer Father's Day. And I have three kids, two of whom are teenagers, and they got up the next day and were just regular old teenagers again, <laughs> which meant they went back to ignoring me and thinking I am the dumbest person on earth. And so, so yeah, yeah, you know, am I only 361 days till Father's Day 2023, I guess, but hey, who's counting? 